Yeah. On February 4th, I was driving, I'm the, I'm the head pastor of the Baptist Church now. Mm -hmm. And um, all I can say is my life changed in July because for two years, I have me, 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 that baby, that I'm all, no, I'm not ready. I, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> Because, you know, when we, look at, when we look at our own selves, we really have nothing right, to say. We have no value. We have nothing. nothing. But when we're in Christ and we're resting in him and, 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 our, and our heart is so in tune with his heart, we have yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> um, it's better to say nothing than to say something. So I always tell my church, if God doesn't give me a message for Sunday, somebody's going to have to get up and preach somebody the morning. Does. So they all know. <laughs> they all know. Yeah. Am I telling the truth or am I telling the truth? Some of our truth yeah, is here. And I am just so excited. So on February 4th, I was driving. I was I can tell you exactly where I was. I was just coming in to, um, down the back road of Escalon, you know, right where it splits off, right before you, where they sell the animals, that place right there. Uh -huh. yeah. And I heard the Lord say, daughter, Romans 8 is the gate. I'm all, what? what? What's that mean, Lord? <laughs> And he said it again. I'm all, I'm all, what do you mean? Well, say, because we're studying gates on our Wednesday and in our Bible study, we're studying the gates. And he says it again. Romans 8 is the gate. And I'm all, Romans 8 is the gate. I'm all, what does that mean? And then he said, daughter, Romans 8 is the gate to all life. I'm all, what? I'm all, what do you mean all life? I'm all excited because if God's telling me something, there's something I need to step into. Or maybe I've stepped into it, but I don't know I've stepped into it. Or maybe I'm supposed to be stepping into it, but I'm so blind, I don't even know. I'm here. And he had told me in December, he says, I want you to read Romans. So I've been reading Romans over and over. And, but he kept saying, go back and read 7. Go back and read 8. And I would read 7 and 8 sometimes three or four times a day, like since December. Yeah. And so, and I was starting to get revelation, but I have to be really honest with you, I wasn't pressing really hard into Romans because I was really still studying glory and the Holy Spirit was taking me into revelation and understanding and, you know, I'm just a baby in Christ, you know, I'm just learning all these things and I'm so excited. But, but um, so I was studying, you know, and he was teaching me about, you know, um, how he paid the price, through, you know, through condemnation, he brought forth love, you know? And I got to verse 11 in chapter eight. Change your oh, life. Change your life. This is the um, good news translation. If the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies by the presence of His Spirit in you. This has to do with your healing. This has to do with healing. This has to do with walking. This is how John G. Lake held blue blonde plague in his hand and it died yeah. um, in this verse right here. Right, right there. Yeah. Just in this this verse right here. Right. This is what Captain yeah. Holman walked in when she released the power of the yeah. presence of the Holy Spirit and it brought forth healing. Amen. Yeah. And he was sharing that with me. And I know where my destiny is. I've known where my destiny is for 24 years. Am I walking in it? No, but I'm just starting. Oh, you're going. Yeah. But this is what I know. I know if I can abide in him, abide in the vine, because I'm just the branch, and I can get nothing on myself, by myself, there's nothing of value that the branch has other than the fruit that's produced through the vine, through the nurture and the nature of the vine. If I can rest in him, if I can just live in Jesus, knowing that I can't ever heal anybody, it's impossible for any human person in this room to heal somebody. Amen. But if I have the faith that God that God put in me, according to his word, living in his word, resting in his word, releasing his presence wherever Amen. I go, yes. I know that the miracles and the miraculous will happen. That's right. Because it's not me doing it, it's just me giving voice to the word, standing in faith. Am I right? There's one of Amen. a great healing evangelist right there. That's mm -hmm. yeah. walking great healing, probably longer than any of us have been alive in this room. I mean, like this man has brought healing all over. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Just yeah. living in the presence, resting yeah. in the presence of God. You you, yeah, you have lived in the same anointing, right? Yeah. You two yeah. have seen probably thousands and thousands of people healed and delivered from diseases. Yeah. You guys have seen the miraculous in ways that maybe a lot of us never have. You've seen cre recreative miracles, mm -hmm. not only through your own ministry, but through other ministers that you right. served as you were learning and growing and raising up in your positions in Christ, right? Amen. Is it that simple? <laughs> Is it not just that simple? 
So it's not mystical. People think that they have to be so holy. Not that you don't have to be. <laughs> but, but you just have to rest in Jesus. You just have to know that he is all that you need. And that you don't have to put your own understanding on it and lean on your own understanding. But put all of what you have and all of, of the dreams and the hopes and, and all the things that he placed within you just at his feet and say, okay, Lord, okay, let's do this. And always be led by him and never go on your own understanding. And I promise you, you will see the healings and the miraculous go wherever you go because he is not a liar and he said that he would touch as we went forward. And so that's what I've been meditating on for a few months. I taught on the vine for like about a month and I've been teaching on Romans, Romans chapter 8 for the last four weeks. And I'm barely starting to, I mean, I really feel like I'm just barely starting to comprehend the fullness of what he's trying to get get into my heart, but he keeps saying, God, this is not for you, this is for the bride, this is for the Amen. church. He Amen. says, will you not, will you not share? And I'm like, well, Lord, if you teach me, I'll teach somebody else. <laughs> because really, don't think anything you have is something special that's just for you. Right on. It's not for you, it's for whomsoever. It's for whomsoever. So nurture the things that God has put in your heart, allow him to grow you in them, walk by faith, and be obedient, and I Amen. promise you, you'll, you'll fulfill your destiny because that's all we ask. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Amen. Let me say it again. This is the day the Lord has made. Amen. And he wants us to connect to that every day. He's got something for us every day. And we're fast approaching the day of the day. You know what I'm talking about there. And we need to, uh, we need to be connecting to that. And I'm so encouraged by what the Lord is doing. And the worship, I just want to thank you guys for the worship here. It's really Awesome. The presence, the fire of the Lord is here. Oh, yes. And uh, I just sense his presence here. And uh, my friend Scott uh, Crawford has, has come from the Bay Area. We're filming. Uh, we're, we're getting fired up about evangelism. Yeah, praise God. That's burning in my spirit. Yes. Of winning souls and sharing your faith and, and breaking through the old stuff. And get, we got to do something new to reach some people. <coughs> So I'm I'm uh, I'm so blessed to have met him, mm -hmm. and uh, and we're going to put uh, things uh, on our little network and things to encourage people to share the faith. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're I'm just feeling really stirred about sharing my faith and uh, and sharing the the, the, the gospel. I was working out last week. Uh, was it last week that we talked? And I, I ran into my friend Dr. Bill. Yeah. Just say hi, Dr. Bill Colanta. He, yeah. he is a, yeah. He's written some books on sharing your faith with uh, texting and all kinds of uh, yeah. really inspired and yeah. yeah. things. And yeah. so God, God kind of connected us, and we're going to try to maybe have you on today or early, and we're going to film and to encourage people to share their faith. Amen. 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 It's just amazing how he's aligning people right now. For his purpose in this house, yes, and and there's something happening, I believe, in the, in the spiritual realm, yes. where God is showing up. Like like our sister said, this something is different. I may mean, just feel like there's totally. something totally. new that's that's coming on this planet. Yep. And I, I had a verse that was sticking out to me yesterday, and I felt inspired to share it today. Amen. Um, and I think this this is prophetic and. Uh, Isaiah 42, verse 9, it says, Behold, the former things are come to pass. And that ought to motivate you right there. That's right. Just looking at what the Lord has said he would do and what he has done. Mm -hmm. and, and guess what it goes on to say? And new things, you know, I declare before they spring forth, Amen. I tell you of them. And uh, there's some new things that are springing forth. Amen. 
there's some things in you that he wants to to spring forth and uh, Amen. and I believe he wants he, he's bringing things to remembrance right now and uh, just stirring up those dreams and those visions and he wants to show us things to come Amen. and yeah. things that he's ordained you know and, and here we are in the latter days and, and he's wanting us to connect to what he has done connect to the rest of the Lord so to speak but to really connect to what God is doing in this hour, we got to go to the beginning. Because, you know, God calls things forth, you know, from the end. He calls the, you know, from, he calls forth about the end from the beginning, right? And, and you're going to see things play out again oh, yeah. and again and again. And guess what? We're in, we're in the season of seasons, I think, where God is he's stirring the house. He's stirring the remnant in this hour. Yeah. He's stirring the priests, the ministers. Yeah. He's stirring those who will be stirred, right. who have ears to hear, right. who right. will go right. out right. and not just give a lip service, but do something. Right. How many yeah. believe that he's stirring us up right now? And that's what's burning in my spirit. I think that maybe the Lord may stir some things up here. I don't know. But believe me, he's fanning the flame of our giftings, our callings, he's breathing on that word. He, he wants you to, to if you haven't, uh, you know, step into it and just keep, keep sowing into what he's given you to do. He's stirring up the rim. He's stirring, he's stirring up your gifts. He's stirring us up to go and to do work in the house of the Lord. Amen. And that's what he's doing. Yeah. He's raising the house. Yeah. He's making us those lively stones. He wants to yeah. fulfill us with more of the stature of Christ in this hour. And uh, we have to yeah. get stirred up. Man. We can't let the enemy or the flesh, you know, dictate uh, you know who, who God is, right? And, and we just gotta we just gotta start doing the word of God. And, and I'm telling you what, there's there's things that are coming on this planet that have yet to come that Jesus said would happen. And it's starting to happen. Yes. You know, I was just looking this morning on, on YouTube, you know, and, and what happened last year. All these storms and these crazy earthquakes and all these things that have been prophesied for centuries uh, that Jesus said would happen. They're happening. And yet so many people are living as if God's not coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. But guess what? God says he is not slack concerning his coming. You know? oh, yeah. He doesn't want anybody to perish. He, and there's a there's a window of opportunity uh, to go out and to start doing what God's ordained us to do. Like Kim Murray, he's got more than to do. God's going to open up doors. I'm just going to prophesy that over you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. There's a gift in you, brother, for sharing your faith and teaching, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know what? You you may barely you may step out on the television here pretty soon before long as well. And cool. he's our agent for the television, but this yeah. brother is full of wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And I just see new things springing forth. Yeah. In Kim Murray, I see new things springing forth in all of us here. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for well, all of our our friends that are here. Yeah. Yes. And people that have helped us in, in the past. On my way here, I called this little lady from Valley Springs who who um, who gave me some things prophetically. She was just she's just really obedient. She gives little cards. She gives things out prophetically, and, and uh, maybe I'll just share one little testimony. But she gave me some things that the Lord was talking to me about in such a way that it connected to me with God, to what God was doing. Just sharing your faith. I remember um, uh, it's been a number of years ago that uh, the Lord called us to to start planting another church in in Calaveras County. We were we were meeting at this armory hall. I think that might be prophetic too. And he, but, but he started he started giving me a vision of starting another group, and we started pioneering this little uh, group up in San Andreas. And for a number of years, we were holding, we called them Friday night fire services. <coughs> it's probably a good thing. They were involved. Some things happened in that little church. And, mm -hmm. and it came to the point where the Lord says, okay, it's time to turn this into a, another church now. Yeah. And I was looking for places to meet. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was showing me Valley Springs. Yep. And uh, yep. that's, that's, that's kind of prophetic too, right? Yeah. Yes. Right. Uh, yes. like it's that. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we like prophecy, but but the long story short, I looked everywhere for a place. There was no place to meet that I could find, 
and they were all booked up and I you know we, we go by faith we literally were living from heaven on earth yeah and we didn't know the way and I was really taking that to the Lord I said okay Lord I, I know you're calling us to start a group in Valley Springs but I don't know where I ended up having a dream and uh and in this dream, I woke up and on this neighborhood, I was driving our little vehicle and um, I ended up at Bill Johnson's house. Mm -hmm. In my dream, it was a residential neighborhood in a cul-de-sac and, and I went up to the front door and could hear all this worship going on and all this. And, and, and then somebody was with me. How many know that angels are with you sometimes? Yeah. I don't know, I can't say you who it was. All the time. But the door was open to the garage, and I didn't knock on the door. I felt funny because I didn't know anybody there. And this person that was with me says, go in the, go, go in, go in the garage. And I said, I can't go in the garage, you know. <laughs> but it was a dream. Yeah. So I went in. <laughs> <laughs> I went in. I went in. how dreams do that. <laughs> I went in, and, then, and when I, I went in, I noticed on the step of the door going into the garage, a sword. Wow. Little sword, little Good short sword. sword. And I heard him talking about his sword, you know, the, how the, the, the armor, you know, one of the swords. It's not a real thick sword. It's like close, it's a short, short sword, sword for yeah. combat. Right. Yeah. I thought, oh my gosh, I freaked out. I go, that's his sword. <laughs> <laughs> and I made a beeline for my vehicle, and all of a sudden I started it up, and it was a loud kind of a rumble, you know, with this car that we had, because my wife's car was white. Yeah, everybody, the whole ministry chain came out and they surrounded my vehicle and they said, what are you doing here? I said, oh man, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do now? And this guy, and I don't know these guys. I've never been around them. But I am fond of Bill Johnson, some of his teachings I've watched and right. listened over the years. His, his clothes were shining in my dream. Yeah. Okay. And he seemed to know what was going on. I was so thankful. <laughs> and I said, it's okay, everybody. They all went back in the house and and I said, Lord, I still don't know which way to go. How many know when God has called you, gives you a calling, there's all kinds of roads that, yes. that present themselves. Yes. I yes. saw these highways going everywhere, <coughs> literally everywhere. I had no way of, of knowing which way to go apart from the leading of the Spirit. Amen. And I heard the word Highway 26 in my dream. Yep. Highway 26. I said, okay, I know that's how you go. So I went back up to Highway 26 and I went back to this veterans hall that was booked out solid. And guess what? The Glory Bound Church just moved out. Yeah. The Glory Bound Church. And uh, the Glory <laughs> Church, Southern Baptist group. And, uh, and I got there at the right time. The lady was surprised that Amen. I got in there. And she said, they just, and he was, I got in. We've been in there ever since. And uh, right after that, this little lady met me at the coffee shop. And she goes, Brother Kevin, Brother Kevin, I got something for you. And, and we were having a little mid study. We're just starting there in Valley Springs. And she pulled me to her trunk and she pulled out, guess what? A little sword. A little sword. Oh, man. A little sword. <laughs> and she gave me something else, too. Uh -huh. And she gave me this little. Um, this little pulpit with a, a match on it, oh. and, um, wow. and this morning I felt led. I felt led to light that baby up. <laughs> I lit that baby up today. So I don't know what's going to happen, but something's going to happen in our life. And, oh, and I've been. Mean, it's been sitting on my shelf for a number of years, and Lord says, "Go get it, and light it up." And so I lit that baby up. But and you know what we. We, we learned why the Lord gave me that sword because oh, yeah. you're going to need to start a church. You're going to need the sword of the Amen. spirit <laughs> to cast down and take down these opposing thoughts, these Amen. religious Amen. spirits. And I can't tell you how many battles and things that we've, we've had to contend and stand and religious spirits, Jezebel spirits. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've seen some stuff trying to stop <laughs> us. And, uh, but you know what? <coughs> we, we learned how to stand. Yeah. Yeah. And you can stand. So I want to encourage you, just stand, learn to stand, mm -hmm. and don't give up on the Word of God, because it, it, His voice does not return void, it says. That's right. That's right. And uh, you, you, know, you will reap in due season, right, if you don't faint, right? right? But we've got to learn how to pray and not faint, and, and step into this. And, 
to become doers of the word. That's that's probably the the word that I have, you know, is we're deceiving ourselves if we don't become doers of the word. Amen. The Lord says in Luke chapter 6, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I say? Right. You know, and, and guess what? The storms are coming, but he wants us to be rocked in him. Yeah. You know, he wants us to walk in. Sort of put a foundation on you. That's right. And well, you can't be shaken by what's coming on this planet. And, that's right. and so the storms are coming. And yeah, we, we think we've seen those things. But I'm telling you, we, it's just getting ready. Oh, yeah. It's getting ready. It's, it's about ready to bust loose. Amen. And it's time for the, the remnant. God has a hidden remnant. Yes, we are all new creations in Christ. He wants to connect you to your new creation identity. Yeah. Amen. Please do that. They're your new creation identity. And then go back to the beginning and start listening to the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord only leads you into that which God has ordained you to walk in from the foundation of the world on the good works. And we've just got to let the Lord, uh, you know, bring us into that place where it's not us, but we're living by grace. And, and there's this principle of grace and peace that's multiplied <coughs> through the knowledge of God. And when you step into your new creation identity, you connect to his purpose for your life. I'm telling you what, the gates are going to come down. Amen. You need to just say amen, the gates are coming down. That's the yeah. word he's given me yeah. for this year, is the gates in the end. I can't speak for everybody or other churches, but in my life, the gates are coming down. And uh, we've been studying the gates. We're going after this with everything we can. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, something just jumped out all over me the other day when John Kilpatrick, we've been studying his teaching on the gifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy is awesome. If you yeah, can't, yeah. I don't know if you can get that teaching. It's out of print. It's from a number of years ago. But, but Isaiah chapter 45 reveals a principle that can take down those gates in your life. That, uh, you know, he spoke to Cyrus and to the anointed, the, yeah. the, the anointed ones. He's speaking to us. And it reveals there that through the loins of kings, that the two levy gates are going to open up. And, and uh, those brass gates are going to, we're going to break through them just by yeah. connecting to, uh, to this principle of the faith of the sea. And again, you know, the faith of the sea that we live by is Jesus, who is the king of kings. And, and when you step into that, and I'm telling you what, there, there is nothing that can stop you when you connect to what he's ordained you to walk in. Yeah. And so the gates will come down, and it doesn't matter who you are. It works for anybody. Right. Right. But you're going to have to learn how to to suffer through some things, and you know, doesn't it say? Jesus said concerning John the Baptist, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. Yeah. Please hear me. There's there's a war going on. Yeah. Actually, the church is in a battle to know the yeah. truth. I mean, believe that we're in a battle to, to open it, and we're going to have to have faith, like Jesus said. He said, if, if you have faith as a seed of a, a mustard seed, right, which is a pure seed, the mustard seed will not mix. It will not, you can't hybrid, you know, it, 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 it won't mix. Yeah. You would say. And, and so when, when you get into to what we're talking about, Jesus, Jesus is going to bring you into the place where when a mountain rises up or a, a demonic thing tries to come in, you know, he, he's going to give you things to say because that's part of what faith does. Yeah. Faith, faith overcomes. It overcomes. And, and you need to speak. A lot of people are born again, but they're not speaking what God has given them to speak. And you and you got to seek. you got to knock. you got to ask to say, well, what do you want me to do? And just do it. And you're going to Amen. see some stuff happen. Amen. And that peace is going to get under your feet, you know, and it's going to start crushing some things. And Amen. That's an awesome thing. And then faith also calls things. Yes. yes. It calls forth. It calls from, from the realm of heaven, that which already is, into your circumstances. But guess what? You know, we need to connect to his timing. How many know that's such an important thing? Yeah. And he's doing something right now. I believe we're in a we're in an unusual time of the Lord where the Lord is moving, where things are ready to manifest and they're ready. Yeah. We things, they're gonna happen whether we're ready or not. We need to be on the right uh, side of the rocks to do because he it's the time it. it's the season. And so I just want to encourage you with that. Maybe I'll share a little bit of my testimony. Yeah. Kim asked me to share a little of my testimony. I want to go 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me know if I go too long. No, no, we're, we're we're good. Good. I used to, yeah, you could never hour. even get me up here to share for three minutes. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. when I first started, I, just, I didn't want to be up here. I went, if I was in church, I was in the back row. Uh -huh. Is that the truth? Mm -hmm. I couldn't even hardly talk to my wife. That's how bad it was. Mm -hmm. But something, you know, that's that's something was squatty, sitting on my calling, yeah. and gifting, trying to hinder me. Mm -hmm. You know, God wants to break us through. So. Oh yeah, He does. And um, I believe we're entering into harvest. Praise God. Okay, so just real quick, I'll try to give you a, right, a reader's digest uh, version mm -hmm. of a few things, and maybe a few highlights from the Word of God that might encourage you. Mm -hmm. And what God has is, is, is called you to do, and that's my prayer, is just not to exalt what I'm doing. You know, our testimony should kill the flesh, right? It's true. And, and, and exalt Jesus and let yeah. him who he is. And, and so, I, you know, I just realized my testimony is just mostly him bringing me to the end of myself. So he could do something. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's just a good that's, that's the right way. I was, you know, I'm from Modesto. My, my father was a house builder. Yeah. We built subdivisions, thousands of homes. I was raised in that. That's what we, I was, I was, you know, I born to do. We built houses and yeah. built subdivisions. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what I thought I was going to do. But, you know, living under the shadow of my father all these years, I wanted to do something different. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to live under it because, you know, anyway, that's just the way I was. I wanted to do something different on my own, you know. And, and, uh, and so one day I was... I was kind of just stirring it. How many believe the Lord puts these desires in your heart? You start dreaming, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. don't underestimate the power of dreams and visions. And, and so one day I got this idea. I happened to be up in Jamestown, California. Because yeah. he, had, he had cattle ranches. And I was a cowboy. And mm -hmm. we had uh, gold mines on some of these things. And I thought... Yeah. Somehow I got this idea. I'm going to be a gold miner. That's what I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I went into this gold, this gold <laughs> store, and <laughs> something jumped on me called Gold Fever. Yeah, well, yeah. And I got this wild idea that I'm going to go, that's what I'll do, because we've got all, my dad was always talking about these gold mines with yeah. these records. Oh, yeah. I'll just go do that. And so, I thought. Yeah. Aren't you got gold mines? Just gold mines, kinds. yeah. Yes. So yes. Kinds of yes. And so I started getting into it and started going up to this place up in Bear Valley <laughs> in Mariposa County. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. we had some gold mines. And yeah. I started poking around in there. And, and one day I was on my way to to, to Bear Valley from, from Ceres. I used to live in Ceres. Mm -hmm. And uh, something happened to me. Yeah. And uh, literally, I. I, you know, please hear me when I say this. I don't, this happened. I don't know why it happened, but it happened. But I heard thunder. Uh -huh. Thunder came to me and it just about killed me. Uh -huh. In fact, I think it did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it did. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, he started speaking to me in this voice that I can't even put words to. And literally, I thought I was going to die. I burst into tears. I, I can say this with every ounce of strength I had. I burst in, and I don't cry. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, he started telling me about his goal and how he wanted me to harvest his goal. And, yeah. Oh my gosh. And I, I thought I was going to die. Oh my gosh. How could this be, you know? Because I didn't believe in God. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't raised in, in church. Mm -hmm. I believe in evolution, right? Yeah. But something happened to me when I was a teenager. I had a, a near-death encounter. And I think some angels helped me out. And uh, anyways, that's another story. And, uh, and uh, oh, man. And so this happened to me. And he started telling me about his goal. And, and uh, he was speaking to me in this poet, poetic uh, way. How many believe God is a poet? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Look at the scriptures. Oh, yes, a good yes, yes. portion of the yes. scriptures are poetry, and instantly they'll produce this gift of poetry. Beautiful poetry. I haven't been sharing it for years. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I said, okay, I look, he started saying, before I'm through with you, a believer in me, you're going to be. Please hear me. If, if people knew how powerful the voice of the Lord is, mm -hmm. I'm telling you what, they would be running into the kingdom. Oh, yeah. I'm not joking. I can't put it into words. He is. His, his voice will crack 
cedars, it says in the Psalms. Yeah, that's right. Mountain yeah. shape. And guess what? God is going to roar here pretty soon. Yeah. 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 The sun of thunders is going to have to rise up, right? Right now. And anyways, he said, before I'm through with you, you're going to be a believer in me. And I said, I sure. believe in you. I, believe. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know who he was, but I knew it was God. And that's, yeah. man, I was Lord, very Lord. Maybe he spoke to me that way because I was such a hard head. I don't know. And uh, I was really hard. I, 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 I was. I was a, I, I'll say it this way. I was a bedroom, okay? That's okay. I was okay. I like, I like four-wheel drives, I like horses, I like drinking beer and chasing girls. That's what I like. Really <laughs> and I like Copenhagen. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Yeah. I was on the highway to hell, literally. Yeah. But something happened to me. He said that, and then all of a sudden, you can believe this or not, I don't talk about this because this is kind of way out there stuff. I went up in this whirlwind and yep. it went into his light and I lost complete sight of, of who I was. Amen. And this lasted for quite a while and I'm still shaken from it. And this has been a number of years. This happened back in 1986. Mm-hmm. So this happened in 1986, I believe. And, and uh, when he was done with me, <laughs> I was ready to serve him. I'll just tell you that. Yeah, right. He yeah. said something to me, and he says, "I planted a seed, my seed in your heart, and uh, you're going to go past in the future." And, mm-hmm. and I remember feeling so empty inside and saying, "What is this? How can a seed be in my heart? What? What? You know?" <laughs> I, I'm car- I was so carnal, I wasn't getting it. I'm like, yeah. "You can't get this. You can't get born into it." You can't understand. Three years, I was, I, I was trying to figure out what all this was. And, and prior to that, I had a near-death uh, encounter, as I said, and, and I, I tried listening to these preachers on television and, and these guys, and you know, the, I can't remember some of these guys, the Jim Baker show yeah. was on, yeah. and a number of shows were on, and I was not getting it at all. I didn't hear yeah. the part about being born again. Uh-huh. The simplicity of the gospel wasn't, wasn't at least I was, I'm sure it was being preached, but I didn't hear it. very often. Yeah. No. And I just didn't get it, and I looked to at the Catholic uh, churches and different churches, and I just didn't understand. I, but guess what? You know, when you're looking and you're not hearing the voice of God, another voice will come to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's what happened to me one day. I was I got pulled into the uh, cult, into the New Age, and right. I, but I knew there was something, so I started searching. I I searched. I, I studied a little bit about the, the Muslim faith. I studied a little bit about, you know, uh, the Hindu religion and all these different things. I went down the line trying to find the truth. Yeah. And uh, I studied New Age. And, I mean, I could tell you some stories. I yeah. really can. And I had some encounters. Yeah. And I'm telling you, this is no joke. I got, I got to the point where I said, you know what? This is just all I'm finding is a bunch of evil. Weird, evil stuff. There was, there's devils. I was having all kinds of things right back at me. I said, I've had it. I put, I got all my books. I 